Hello everyone. I am Li Siguo. I'm from the School of Environment of Beijing Normal University. My presentation today is analysis of energy consumption and carbon dioxide emission in long-term low carbon transition of Beijing. Climate change is having a continuous and unprecedented impact on the Earth's ecosystems, such as the wildfire. Uh, the Paris Agreement sets a goal of limiting global warming to two degree by the end of the century, and aims to limit it to one point five degree. To achieve this temperature goal, countries must accelerate the research of carbon emissions peaking and carbon neutrality. In response to the Paris Agreement. Some countries have adopted legislation or policies decla declaring the time to carbon neutrality. This is shown in the graph on the left. The developed countries and the European countries are the most involved. However, at the United Nations General Assembly in September. President Xi said, "China will increase its national independent contribution, strive to reach the peak of carbon dioxide emissions by 2030, and achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. This declaration will be a key catalyst for global climate actions." Cities are the major energy consumer and the greenhouse gas emitter. Rapidly urbanizing cities consume more than 67 percent of global primary energy. China's cities currently account for 72 percent of the country's carbon dioxide emissions results from the energy consumption. Therefore, the energy transition and the low carbon development of cities is critical to reducing national carbon emissions. Most cities in China are making their carbon emission peaking plan to coordinate with China's 2013 carbon emission peak target. At the capital, Beijing has been leading and demonstrating low carbon development in 2015. It proposed to have carbon dioxide emissions peak in 2020, 10 years ahead of schedule. The picture on the right points out that Beijing's carbon emissions have entered a period of of fluctuations after 2013 through Beijing's carbon emissions peaking research report from the Climate Change Department. This study combined. This study combined the actual survey data in Beijing to con construct a lead Beijing long-term energy alternatives plan planning system to predict the energy consumption and the carbon emission of different scenarios. The energy demand sectors are divided into agriculture, manufacturing. Construction and transportation and building, and th and set three scenarios: the business as usual scenario, low carbon scenario, and the enhanced low carbon scenario. By adjusting the parameters of energy demand and the transformation model, analysis the energy consumption and the carbon emission of Beijing in 2015 and 2015. On the different scenarios, is the result. The big one is energy consumption of all scenarios in Beijing, and the energy consumption in BAU scenario has the highest growth rate, with annual rate of one point two eight percent. Under the LC scenario, energy consumption peaks. In 2040, with 91.12 mTc, and the total energy consumption in 2050 is 
MTC. In the ELC scenario, Beijing's energy consumption peaks in 2040 with 89.22 MTC and has a 70% reduction in energy consumption per unit of GDP. And the energy consumption is reduced by 20.2% in 2050 compared to the LC scenario. For the energy consumption structure, the Fig 2 show the energy consumption structure from 2050 to 2050 of ELC scenario. And the ELC scenario by 2050, the proportion of new renewable energy used in energy consumption is 73%. Non-fossil Electricity generation accounts for 85% of local electricity generation, and the green electricity accounts for 88% of total electricity consumption. Electricity share of final energy consumption increased from 39% to 68%. Electrification of heating and a large scale increase in the use of electrical vehicles are the main measures for increasing terminal electricity consumption. At the same time, in the ELC scenario compared to the LC scenario, the proportion of biojet fuel used in air transportation in 2050 is relatively high at 50% which greatly increased the, the utilization of biomass. The fix three is carbon emission of all scenarios in Beijing. Under the BAU scenario, Beijing's carbon emissions peak at 156.5 million tons in 2005. 40, decreasing to 67.79 million tons in 2050, a decrease of 28.5%. On the LC scenario, Beijing's carbon emissions continues de to decline, with an annual decline rate of 1.37%. In 2050, the total carbon emissions are 71.86 uh, million tons. The carbon reduction effect is poor with a 44.4% reduction by 2050 compared to 2010 and 10. Under the ALC scenario, Beijing's carbon emissions decline more rapidly, with an annual decline rate of 2.43%, a reduction of 16.6% of the peak emission in 2050 compared to 2010. And here is conclusion. The study builds a middle and long term prediction model for leave Beijing's carbon emissions. The results show that in both the LC and the EL ELC scenarios, Beijing has already entered the peak pathway by 2020 and make its carbon emissions continue to decline in 2020 to 2050. Uh, two is resource importing cities, which are also max cities, cannot achieve their urban carbon neutrality alone. Under the ELC scenario, Beijing's carbon emissions in 2050 are 20.55 million tons, and considering that Beijing's forest carbon sink potential in 2050 is about 7 million tons. Beijing still has 
twenty. Uh, 12 point 12 point four five million tons of carbon emissions that need to be further removed by other emission reduction efforts from Jingjingji regions, or through some domestic carbon pro uh, reduction project. And uh, since Beijing's electricity generation and manufacturing accounts for a small proportion, so CCS technology may not be very useful. So research on how China's carbon finance fi 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 finance strategy can achieve further emissions reductions should be strengthened. And uh, my. Corresponding author is Liu Gengyuan, and here is his email. Thanks for your listening, and here's my oral presentation. Thank you.